Hello, my Edinburgh curious peeps. This weekend, I am going to be exploring our new neighborhood with my new cat friend. Uh, because as you know, we have recently moved here kind of around the Haymarket, Dalry area, and it was really new to me. And I keep seeing all these places that I really want to visit and try out. And I thought I would take you with me. I am actually staying at home alone this weekend. So it's going to be a nice activity to kind of like virtually spend some time with all of you and I hope you're gonna enjoy it and maybe next time when you're visiting Edinburgh you're gonna pay this little neighborhood a visit. So we are starting at a point which might be familiar to many of you because it's a bit of a gateway to Edinburgh city centre, especially if you're approaching from the airport or even from the west coast of Scotland. We are of course in Haymarket, Edinburgh's original main train station. It opened about 40 years earlier than Waverley because obviously Waverley was kind of stuck under, you know, a loch. They had to drain that first. So uh, yeah, Haymarket is the original big train station of Edinburgh and it is still a very important transport hub. This is where trains, trams and buses cross paths, which creates a great point for small businesses to take root. I also adore this little historical pub right next to the station, which is now closed, but uh, seems to be getting ready to reopen. Keep in mind that being a transport hub close to one of the local football stadiums, you might be unlucky to get stuck in an unexpected crowd if you don't plan ahead, like me yesterday. I really wanted to highlight some of the independent businesses around here. First one being Nomad, a friendly little coffee shop with some of the nicest cakes I've had around here. In the same block, you will find the Vietnam Gallery House, a cute Vietnamese restaurant, which has always been my favorite for Vietnamese meals beyond Ban Mi's here in Edinburgh. Steak Barber also seems really cool, almost to the extent where I am kind of intimidated to ever go in. They do sell takeaway coffee though, so you know, maybe that's the first step. If Nomad is too busy, and it might be because it's quite small, and you still need a pick-me-up, walk a bit further west and visit Coates Cafe. It is more generously sized and has great regular veggie and vegan breakfasts and cake. You can obviously get those breakfasts for lunch as well, which is what I usually do. So at this point of my exploration I started feeling really chilly, it was about 6 degrees. So I headed back to Dalry Road for a little bit of a caffeine fix. We have adopted Throat Punch as our go-to coffee shop. They work with a darker tasting roast, almost reminiscent of like Italian coffee, but without that burned edge to it you can sometimes get with Italian espresso. After my little pit stop, I walked a bit further down Dalry Road. This is not an area a tourist would normally visit, but it is a really pleasant local road to explore around, with a great number of charity shops, Italian restaurants, international supermarkets, and even an Italian greengrocer shop, which almost seems too fancy for me to get anything. I, I don't feel like I'm worthy of this beautiful produce. <laughs> By this point, you have probably noticed the large construction site around the area too. These are gonna be the Haymarket Towers, three of them, with office space and a hotel and a bunch of restaurants. Can't say I'm super thrilled to be living next to a huge development, but thankfully it's not super noisy or dusty. Okay, now I'm headed into West End. This is a really nice area to walk around and I feel like it's a bit underappreciated by visitors. On my way, I passed the Palmerston, a cool, kind of newish restaurant we have visited some time ago to celebrate finishing our house move. It's a bit on the pricey side, but uh, I think it's perfectly affordable as a treat. Also, I appreciate that it's just not pretentious at all, it's just one of those places. On my way to St. Mary's Cathedral, I got distracted by the Palmerston Church having the best colored doors. But yeah, this is the iconic cathedral you see every time you look towards the west from Princess Street. It is a beautiful Gothic building and at 90 meters, its main spire is actually the city's urban area's tallest building. The green spaces around the cathedral are usually open to public, so you can even have a little picnic here when it's warmer. 
after visiting the cathedral, I'm off to meander through West End some more. First up is the iconic number 12 Melville Crescent, every Instagrammer's favourite house front. After that, William Street, another hidden gem which almost has a Dublin-y vibe to me for some reason, and it seems like the place to go for some cosy bar hopping. And around the corner from here is another fave, Paper Tiger. Come here to get some quality indie gifts and greeting cards. So from here I could basically very comfortably walk to the city center, but that's for another video. Today I will make a U-turn and walk back towards Haymarket. But instead of going home, I will explore another direction towards Fountain Bridge. If you take Morrison Street, you'll see many cool little local bars and eateries. The other night we tried Rancho, a friendly South American steakhouse. Further up is a couple of cute coffee shops and an eco grocery store. But I'm actually heading to Nice Times Bakery for a little lunch. I never got the opportunity to sit down, so this is very exciting for me. All the baked goods here look amazing every time I pass around. And this time I ended up having their focaccia sandwich, which was like a ham and cheese sandwich with some nice like mustard and salad. And it cost me eye-watering seven pounds. However, I do have to admit that it was one of the nicest focaccias I've had in it. Ages. Next, turn to our Gardener's Crescent to find this little hidden area which feels positively Londony to me. If you walk further, you will hit Fountain Bridge, a somewhat businessy area with a bunch of student accommodation complexes and some newly built flats. It's also where you will find Fountain Park, which has a bunch of restaurants and a gym and a cinema complex with an IMAX screen and a trampoline park. I love that trampoline park, so much fun. Okay, so I made it home, it was very cold and my camera batteries do not like when it's this cold. Actually, we kind of recently had quite a cold snap. Um, it went from being like 14 degrees to suddenly being like six, you know, and you really feel that. Even here in the house, you can really feel how cold it got. It's like um, the heaters are really struggling now. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining me for this little exploration vlog. I've had a lot of fun time just kind of seeing like what's is around our new house. It might be fun to do this for like more neighborhoods, but I think that in that case I would prefer it to be a bit more structured and planned, while this was just a fun thing to do for myself and again bring you over because I was here alone this weekend and it was really nice to have some like virtual company. Uh, as always you can also find me on Instagram on Kaki Bot and Kaki Blog and yeah See me there, uh, say hi, and I will see you soon. Bye. What's up? What's up? I'm sorry, I don't have any treats for you. What's up?